Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I misdiagnosed a car, unfortunately threw parts at it, and how I plan on fixing it. Alright, so the car that was pictured in the beginning of the video was actually parked outside, but I figured you guys could take a look at my G80 M3 while I talk. I replaced the fuel injectors on that F30 N20 because of a rich code. That did not fix the issue. It turns out that the HPFP was leaking, dumping fuel into the oil and via the PCV system recirculating it back into the engine causing the O2 sensors to see too much fuel and then causing the individual cylinders to be getting less fuel than they need and you'd get a hesitation or stall after the start stop system would engage and a rich code. I learned my lesson and we're going to replace the HPFB in this video. I'll cut over to me unboxing it and showing you the components in the kit. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in replacing it proactively because it seems like it would fail with mileage and I can confidently say that the issue is gone now. I have zero codes and I get perfect start stops and zero hesitation. So if you have a rich code on your BMW, it could be one of the modern HPFBs leaking internally. So this is a kit that I bought, new gasket, new bolts, an adapter harness given this is the updated HPFP, the new fuel line, the new roller tap it. This is the updated HPFP. So from what I understand when these fail, they, you can get a rich code which will cause fuel to leak past this and dump into the engine. And I, I got the rich code again even though I changed all my injectors. If you have a P0172 rich code and your spark plugs look fine, when you pull them out, I would look at this HPFB. It's diluting your oil, it's putting fuel into your oil. It's a critical thing. After replacing this, I'll be changing the oil as well. So essentially the mistake for me was assuming it was the injectors just because it's common when it was the HPFB. I'm not upset about replacing them because they do wear at after enough time, they can fail. These new ones are a little quieter, but regardless, uh, lesson for you guys, consider the HPFP if you're getting a rich code. So I'm gonna start by removing the engine cover. This is a pneumatically controlled wastegate, so it has vacuum lines leading to a diaphragm inside the engine cover. The sound dampening should be removed. The sound dampening for the HPFP should be removed. We'll disconnect the electrical connector, which we're gonna be converting. This cowling and stuff's gonna have to come out of the way, so we'll pull this power line out of the seal, grab from here and pull away. And using a 10 mil, rotate these counterclockwise, 90 degrees, pull from here, move it over and take it away. Same story over here. Next up we have 10 mils right here. There's a plastic push pin right here. Remove these 10 mils. Grab this, pull it forward. Get out of the way. Gotta remove this line. So be ready with a rag, 17 mil. That's the high pressure side. There's another 17 over here, low pressure. Up here is another, the other end of that line. At the back here, there's this bracket that's in the way. These are E7s. Now we can get this lifted up a little bit just to be able to remove this feed line. Now we're gonna remove the HPFP itself. There's two T30s. You're gonna wanna crack them slowly because there's spring tension. So just go bit by bit on each side so the tension gets relieved evenly. Now we can take this up and out. This cover will be slid off. There's a gasket here. It's kind of brittle on this car, so it's a good thing we're replacing it. It only goes one way because there's that relief. I'm using a magnet to pull out the tappet. There's a little peg here and there's not one here, so it can only go one way. Pay attention to how far down on the board this is. If it's sitting near the top and you try to crank down the HPFP, you risk breaking it. So you'd have to have this be down at the bottom of its travel for you to confidently thread in the new HPFP. Luckily, mine just ended up in that low position. It's kind of luck of the draw, depending on where the engine ends up, where the cams are positioned. I lubricated this. You could use assembly lube or what, whatever you have for lubrication, even oil. So let that fall in. Bring over your new gasket. On this, there's a couple indents and the seal has uh, rubber protrusions, so make sure you orient the seal properly to go into those indents. You wanna slide the bracket on, lay this into place. Mine pretty much sits flush just out the box. That means that the tappet is all the way down. We'll torque these to 12 newton meters. 
Now we'll bring over the lines and reconnect. That's the low side. So the updated fuel line has a rubber isolator to avoid vibrating against your wiring or the other low pressure line and causing a crack. I believe 2015 onward and 20s already have the newer fuel line and the newer connector. We'll bring back this bracket, tightening the two E7s on the back of this bracket here that bolt to the valve cover. This bracket's to manage some wiring and give a place for your engine cover to snap into. Bringing over that acoustic cover. The only thing left is the connector, which is different. So I'll just plug this into the HPFP. It has a little locking tab so that it can't come undone by vibration. That's probably why they changed this connector because it has a little gray locking tab that you have to disengage before you could ever take it out. This has a red and white wire. This harness, you're gonna connect your white to white and green and white to red. So I'll have to cut that, strip it, and use crimp connectors and heat shrink to finalize that. So I'm going to cut this close to the connector, but not all the way, just in case you never know. Now I'll get my wire strippers. Insert this one end onto the wire and crimp. It's a solid mechanical connection. I'll cut this down. I have two large heat shrinks. So we'll crimp the fully white wire, the fully white wire. And the green white wire with the red wire. Those are nice solid crimps. Given the proximity to fuel, I have to use a heat gun instead of a lighter. All right, at this point, I'm just putting a temporary vacuum line to avoid putting the engine cover on for testing. So we can start the car up and check for leaks. All right, let's give it a cold start now. Uh, it may take a second longer cranking. We didn't empty all the injector lines, so it shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> So just picture this scenario, the HPFP is hot, the engine's been running for a long time, uh, fuel's getting past, the seals inside the HPFP falling into the head down into the crankcase, and then via crankcase ventilation, getting brought up into the cylinder head and introduced to be reburned as vapor via the PCV. That vapor causes the O2s to adjust based on seeing too much fuel. They try to pull as much fuel as possible, causing a lean condition overall for the rest of the cylinders, causing hesitation, stalling, and whatnot. That's kind of what would happen when your HPFP is failing. And it dilutes your oil, that could be dangerous too, but it probably takes a lot of running and the engine being really hot before that scenario will happen. That's not a good thing. You'd want to change your oil after this to get rid of all that fuel vapor inside the oil, but that's how that could lead to that. I would focus on a rich condition code, stalling, uh, hesitation after the engine's really hot, and if you pull your spark plugs and everything looks fine otherwise, I would look at the HPFP, change it proactively before you go nuts on the injectors because, you know, that could be money that was thrown away for no reason. And also, you could look at your long-term fuel trim and see if it's trying to pull as much fuel as possible and not being able to pull enough. That'll tell you something as well. By the way, a sneak peek, I'm saving an F30 here that has a timing chain failure. So that's the series coming up. This is somebody else's car, but we are fixing it. Something to look forward to coming up. So that'll conclude this video showing you how to replace your HPFB on your N20 or N26. And hopefully you guys are better equipped with knowledge. If you're getting a rich code, maybe look at the HPFB as well. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. If you liked it, please give it a like so it'll rate higher. Thanks for watching.